So every once in a while you come across a product that is so cool and so well designed that you feel like you need to share it with everyone else. Well, welcome back to OG's Danger Show. <laughs> So if you've been with OG's Danger Show since the very beginning, you know that I have a little feature I like to call Hot Tubbing with Madonna. That's where I feature products that seem like a good idea at first, turn out not to be such a good idea. Well, in the interest of not staying so negative, I'd also like to highlight some products that I stumble across from time to time that are excellent products that outdo anything else that I believe that's on the market. So I'd like to call this section 50 Shades of Greg. So as I'm putting things away here, I wanted to talk to you real quick. My gun dealer some time ago was wearing a Nex belt, an EDC Nex belt. He highly recommended the thing to me, said it's the last belt I'll ever need. I was a little skeptical, but I've been looking for a better gun belt. So I got online, ordered myself the Supreme Appendix Nex belt. Once I got this belt and assembled it, I couldn't believe how nice this thing was. It is very easy to adjust from larger to smaller. If you eat too much at the, uh, at the dinner table, you press one little tiny button, the thing will slide open for you. If you need to ratchet it down a little bit, uh, tighten it down over a, a pistol or a pistol holster, all you gotta do is take both ends of it and squeeze it together. It is crazy how adjustable this thing is. The thing I like about it too is that it's very rigid top to bottom. If you know anything about gun belts, you know you want to have a very rigid belt. You don't want a nice floppy belt like these from, I don't know, this is probably from Walmart or Kohl's. I can take my fingers and squish this thing and fold it in half. This thing's garbage for, for gun care. So I do plan on getting on their website and ordering one of their nice uh, dress belts. They have dress belts in brown, black, and a million different buckle uh, configurations. This is another 511 brand belt. This is sold often as a tactical belt or an instructor's belt. Uh, listen, this thing's barely better than that leather belt. I mean, look at this thing. I can squeeze it right here and bend it over. That's not rigid enough for an actual gun belt that's going to be worn all day long. You need to have something quite a bit more substantial. I will go ahead and pop off my tier one concealed holster right now and show you this next belt. And you'll see that the thing is rigid enough to hold its shape. But also, unlike those other belts, I can take this thing all day long and I can squeeze down on it as much as I can and I cannot get that belt to collapse, no matter what. There's that little release button underneath. Loose end of the belt has these proprietary ratcheting straps. Next belt got tired of using the industry standard ratcheting, uh, ratcheting piece that is used by so many other ratcheting belt makers. These things wear out, fall apart because they're made out of cheap plastic. Well, they started making their own. That's why they make them red, so you'll know that that's uh, actual next belt product. So those ratcheting straps, when you insert it into the buckle, I mean, it doesn't get any easier than that, folks. And as you put it in, that thing is firm and it's in there for good. You can hear it ratcheting closed with the press of a button. I can ratchet it back open. I can open this up for holster carry. I can close it down tighter if I take the holster off at night. It's just awesome. And dirt simple, that's what's important. So next belt has a series of printed marks, screen printed inside of their belt. There's their logo. But you can see the uh, opposite of the ratcheting teeth. You can see all of these printed measurements in here. And what they recommend you do is, if your belt size is 36, they recommend you not cut it at 36, folks. Leave yourself a little extra room. These things go out to, I believe, 50 inch waist. So that's a pretty decent sized waist. And uh, I'm gonna show you here on the tabletop when we set up this next one, exactly how to cut this to the desired length, leave it a little extra. I actually left too much on my next belt to begin with. I had a big, long, probably eight inch long piece left over. I was a little too afraid to cut it down too short. I didn't want to ruin the dang belt. So uh, I actually left too much on there. I took out those three little Allen screws, simply removed that buckle off of there and cut another six inches off of that thing, threw it in the trash. It 
comes off very easily. I guess you could do it with scissors. I did it with a little uh, saw attachment on a multi-tool. So you don't need to use like a uh, open flame to seal it off, but you can always do that to kind of help uh, finish off that end. There you can see those three little screws. They don't use pins on their belts. Unlike most manufacturers, they use three little Allen screws with little points on them. So as you dial them in there, and by the way, they're already Loctited for you. As you dial them in there and ratchet them down, they're holding that belt buckle on there nice and tight. However, not permanently. If you need to get this thing off because you want to buy one of their additional buckles and swap this thing out, zip, 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 take it off with the uh, Allen wrench and swap on your new, your new buckle. I've already taken this one off once to cut off the excess belt when I left it too big. Anyway, next belt, I think this thing's a winner. I highly recommend it. I will not use anything else for a gun belt in the future. I'm a big fan of appendix inside the waistband carry. It's the way I carry most of the time until winter rolls around and I can carry a jacket at least. But I carry a pistol up front in, in, in the appendix inside the waistband position most of the time year round. And this belt is just crazy in how it's, it's almost custom designed to go with your holster. When I find something that's actually really cool out there, I like to show you guys because I appreciate videos that I stumble across on YouTube where somebody is objectively reviewing something that they actually like, that they bought with their own money and they like. Not something that was sent to them for testing and they're obligated to say something nice about it. I bought my first next belt directly from their website with my own money and as soon as it came I assembled it. I've been wearing it for several weeks now. I love the thing so much, I ordered a second one in brown. I'm going to open that one up for you here, and we'll also set one up uh, right here on the tabletop so you can see. Very simple. I didn't even really need to look at the instructions, because I'm a man, and I don't read instructions. Anyway, let's do some shooting real quick with this thing. This is the uh, Smith & Wesson... Jesus. This is the Smith & Wesson M&P 9 Compact 2.0. If it had any more names, it'd be a uh, South American dictator. It's got a blacklist barrel in it. That's probably what you're seeing that's a little bit, uh, that sticks out there on the end a little bit. I'll do a review on this pistol another time. The point of this was to show you, this is my most often everyday carried pistol, off duty, spare magazine. I use a tier one concealed holster and I mount that thing right here, appendix inside the waistband. Doesn't matter if I'm wearing floppy cargo shorts and a t-shirt, flip flops in hot weather, or whether I'm in, uh, pants and an actual heavier shirt. I can carry a pistol up here very comfortably all day long. I can drive around for several hours before it becomes a little uncomfortable, at which time all I got to do is reach under here, press that little button, and loosen up this buckle just a little bit. If I'm on a long drive, I loosen up that buckle just a little bit for a very comfortable drive. I jump out to run in and use the restroom somewhere. I can reach over here without even lifting up my shirt. I can reach over here and I can press the two sides of those that belt together and ratchet it down a couple more steps. And now I've got a nice rigid system in here for my concealed carry pistol. That's a good design, folks. times folks you know, hey OG I don't like to carry appendix inside the waistband because I don't like how my firearm pointed right at my Richard and I don't want to blow my own junk off that's okay it's it's your decision as long as you carry if you are legally allowed to do so this next belt I can pop off an inside the waistband holster I can run out two loops slide it through this kydex holster made by my good buddy Chuck. Important to have a good holster that covers the trigger guard of every pistol. And I like Kydex because the pistol snaps in, snaps out. There is no drag like there is with leather. My opinion, being that it's the next belt, again, it took me seconds to do this. I can roll this thing right back inside the buckle here and press it together, zip it up tight. And I now have an outside the waistband holster Let's grab our ears and head over to the range, put on some rounds using an outside the waistband holster and this next belt.
boy, this is a soft shooting pistol. Sure like it. Because some people just need shooting in the face. All right, I think we've established that I hate unboxing videos, but. Inside, it's either a U or an N. So this one's called the Titan Dark Brown Precise Fit Gun Belt. And uh, I just wanted a brown one to go with uh, most of the stuff I wear. I don't see the price on here, but the thing was about 60 bucks. Again, well worth it to me. There you go, they make dress belts. So I'll be back on online here shortly to get one of these brown dress belts. That's pretty cool. Wear it for uh, court and other dress up duties where I always wear a gun. Inside the box, is your belt. All right, so we open the uh, next belt box, and of course we throw everything away. We throw all the packaging away because we're guys, and then later we find out that the most important part of the whole thing is probably in there somewhere, and we gotta go back outside and dig through the trash. So that's cool, there is the Titan Brown. Let me back up a little bit. It's got a nice big old belt buckle on it. Can see that part of the cool thing about next belt they wrap up their belts and they give you a cool little wristband to hold everything together a little extra touch doesn't cost them much but uh, makes them stand out this is their buckle system their buckle system is a magnet a dropping magnet system and you can you might be able to see up in there the little teeth that grab the nylon these buckles are interchangeable so you can remove the little the, the little screws that are going to get screwed in here and uh, pop this thing off and put on a different style if you like it. Look at those little gnarly teeth up in there. Inside the package they're going to give you your Allen wrench. Three little tiny screws. You can see there the little pointed screws pre-loctited for you. Ready to go. And of course your instruction packet. So as it comes from the factory the end is already sealed off and burned so it won't unravel on you i'd probably recommend that once you get done doing all these adjustments that you do the same thing on your stove top that's what i've done with the other one there didn't really need it because of the type of material but uh never hurts to have that little bit extra insurance that uh, you know it's not gonna fall apart on you we're gonna look at the other next belt real quick Take a look over here, a little bit different buckle system. I wanted a lot of extra room on here to wrap around a holster, so I left it up here at 42, 42 inches. I'm gonna leave it a little bit longer than that because I actually don't want a little bit more tail sticking out after the buckle right here. Currently it's about here, and uh, I have to put the, the latch of my holster over that edge, but I'd like it to go a little bit more. Plus, who doesn't want more tail? So I'm gonna find the 44 inch mark here. Looks to be right there. I'm gonna take you guys over here on the edge of the truck, and I'm gonna do this very high tech. You don't need special tools or anything crazy. I'm gonna lay this here. I didn't have any scissors with me the first time, and I don't this time. All right, so I've just cut off, I don't know, I guess that's six inches, 44, up to a 50 inch belt, six inches of this belt here that I don't need. But you can see here, very rigid stuff. All right, I was able to take the old zero tolerance and trim that thing off nice and clean right there, nice straight line. Let's put the knife down, stick our handy dandy high tech fire starting system. If you call it a system, you can charge $70 for it. If you call it a big lighter, it's 59 cents down at your local stop and rob. Let's sear that off there. We got that nice straight edge all nice and melted. So on this model with the Titan buckle, I want to open this little clasp right here. It can exposes those little gnarly teeth in there. Look at that. Don't get your fingers in that thing. You'll catch a bear, or at least a sparrow. I want to then make sure I've got the belt. Last time I, when I first got my Supreme Appendix, I mounted the thing wrong for how it goes on my body. The belt was upside down in relation to the buckle. So uh, don't be an idiot. Make sure your belt is right side up make sure your buckle is on the right end open that little clasp we're going to insert that piece that uh, 
raw edge piece in there. We're going to work it all the way up in there until it's flush with the inside of the buckle. You can see the edge of the buckle, little gap. You want to press it all the way flush right there. And then we're going to swivel this little door down. Those little teeth are going to grab it and clamp it down. You can hear it snap. And the last step, of course, is to take these little three little screws that come included with the next belt. I find it easiest on this on this model of uh, buckle. You only need two of them. It's great that they include a third because you are guaranteed to lose one of these on the kitchen floor somewhere. Um, I find it easiest to mount this thing onto the Allen wrench first like uh, that right there. Mount it on there first and then you've got a little bit of something to uh, point it in there with. Let's go ahead and just set it in there like this. Give it a couple of spins and kind of like changing a tire. We want to set this one in there a little first and then we'll take the second one and set it in its hole. Doesn't get any simpler than this folks. We're going to dial it in there until it meets a little resistance. And now all I need to do is reach over. I want to take the heavy torque side of my Allen wrench and I want to give them a good tightening down until they're seated nice and firm against that web belt in there. Keep in mind that they are already Loctited for you. Doesn't mean that they're impossible to back out, but they're just not going to back out under normal wear. I don't want to go too deep. I could probably drive that screw all the way through that hole, all the way through the webbing and meet the other side. So I just want to go nice and snug in there and let that Loctite go to work. With that, we have our new belt all built up, ready to try it out. You might have seen on the Supreme Appendix that it was a nicely finished sewn edge. Same thing here, not melted off, but actually sewn with a little stitching. The nice little touch right there, not only makes it nice to dive into this buckle being beveled, but uh, they stitch it up so that it is never going to fray on you like so many of the other ones do. On the Supreme Appendix, I'd reach down underneath and I'd press a button in on this one. I've got a little bit of a, a lever, a little kidney shaped lever there. I'm just gonna reach down and swing that forward, outward, and that's gonna release that little paw. Boy, I hope paw's the right word. Sounds like a pretty fancy technical term. But I'm gonna release that, release that little arm in there so that I can run this thing open. So there it is folks, thanks for hanging out with me and listening to me putting together a dang belt. I believe it's good equipment, excellent equipment, I would buy it again if I needed another one and probably will, but I believe it's very good equipment and anytime I come across really good stuff, you're going to see it here on OG's Danger Show, something that really stands out from the crowd and I believe this does it. So it's well worth 60 bucks to get yourself really good equipment. Don't skimp on a cheap uh, $12 belt and a $15 holster off of Amazon. Get yourself good quality stuff. You're betting your life on this. Good equipment's gonna make all the difference in whether or not you make it out of a situation. And of course, we want you all to be safe out there, but we want you to have good gear and not rely, not bet your, your safety on uh, cheap crap off of Amazon that's been shipped over from China. So I encourage you all to be safe out there. If you are legally allowed to do so, carry your firearm. These are crazy times and I would like you to be able to protect yourself and your family. As it mentions here in the front of this video, the police are not going to be there in time to protect you. They're going to be there in time to write a nice little report about what happened, but it's going to be on you to protect yourself. Always has been, probably always will be. So until next video, OG out.